anything. I assume it's recording. Um, it's recording. Okay. How do you know it? I don't even know. Because, it's in the yeah, top in corner. Box. You can see right, it. Right, you can see it. Okay. You well, see I'm the top left on your screen? <laughs> no, maybe I don't have the full screen enlarged. That's why. Oh, or the okay. right glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I stood around the capstone and told people, don't snicker at me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is, as they say. Um, but anyway, that's good that we're recording this. And, you know, I just thought that we could have sort of an open-ended discussion about, um, you know, what we thought of the uh, actual capstone itself and then go into the stock market gain um, after, after that, the summer pilot. So just sort of taking it from the top, I'd start with uh, Bob and Julie, if you've got some uh, any things you want to debrief about, you know, my thought was to point out what you thought was notably good, um, definitely what needs to be improved, or any sort of unexpected positives or negatives. Um, well, I, I can, uh, this is Bob, uh, I can go first. Uh, so I, I mean, I liked, I really don't have, uh, as far as being good, I think we all, uh, as far as the capstone going, I thought the event went well. Uh, I was highly surprised that everything worked technologically uh, and everybody, uh, all the switching went well and we'd have dogs barking in the background or whatever. So <laughs> technologically, I thought it went well. Um, I thought the kids had great insights, everything we'd want them to say. Uh, so I think those who were on the call, who we were trying to impress. I don't know how they couldn't leave impressed uh, with the takeaways. Um, and um, like I said, I, I just thought it was really efficient and well done. I, like I said, I was worried it might ramble or, or students may ramble, but I thought it went really well. And I was also pleased to hear, uh, as we kind of were already aware of, that the coordinators and advisors seem to also be picking up uh, a number of things along the way. So uh, our influence was not just on the students, but on their advisors also. Okay. Uh, Julie, anything you want to add? Um. No, not much. I think it went really well. I think um, uh, I loved the uh, things that the students had to say that that spoke, and I think that um, that will resonate really well. Uh, I love the fact, like, you know, Bob said that it kind of also affected the, um, let's see, the mentors and that the mentors actually learned a lot in the process. Um, I think the only thing that... Um, and I don't know if it was just uh, this particular group, just because most of them weren't educators. I think we need to spend maybe um, more time actually talking about the mechanics of the game and just um, how to, uh, let's see, work with the software. I know a lot of them struggle kind of with that. Um, and just how to kind of teach their kids in order how to do that. So, and like I said, I don't know if that's because um, they're not per se educators, like majority of our, you know, hmm. participants in our normal game. So, but other than that, I thought it went really, really well and I'm excited to do it again. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's very good. What about, um, Mark? Yeah, I, I would just echo what uh, Bob and Julie just said. Uh, I was very pleased with the kids' comments, especially. And what, like Bob said, I think that people listening, uh, you know, that, that's the, the, the people we wanted to impress, I think, had to walk away feeling pretty good about the whole experience. Um, I'm really pleased that the curriculum went so well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, several people, and when I did the interview, uh, with Milwaukee Fellows and stuff, that the first thing he said is they really enjoyed the videos and things like that. So I, I was, you know, I was just personally real glad that I was a little nervous about that part. So I was glad to see that uh, mainly I just heard people say good things about. It. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, Ioni? Um, I'm doing what's good? Yeah, <laughs> just basically the caps that we're talking about the capstone. What's oh, good, okay. what needs improved, uh, unexpected, positive, or negative? Well, I think that the, um, I don't know what, yeah, I think that the, um, 
the capstone was amazing. I know I invited some people, adults, um, who were not a part of the game at all, but are on their own investing journey. And they found it, and some of them have their own children. And they found that just the sharing of these experiences by the uh, young people, as Bob calls them, was very inspiring. Um, I think that it was phenomenal that all the teams, you know, of course, um, Milwaukee teams were able to speak um, and the timing of it. I mean, for us to go through all that we went through and one of the groups had, had a presentation where, you know, they had a representative speaking from a lectern um, and each person, you know, that she called up and talked about what they did, they would, you know, they would get up and stand beside her. I just thought that, you know, it, it brought out um, a lot more things than what we probably just assumed that it was going to be just about investing. Um, and then I think that my other favorite moment was um, when one of the advisors, I believe she was white, um, when she basically shared that you know, this was new for her. And she, as she learned alongside the uh, students she was um, working with, they were in turn teaching her along the way. And I think that um, kind of going to Julie's point um, and something Bob and I talked about yesterday, in our community, we are definitely um, learning multi-generationally. And that's just going to be the reality of, um, of the game. Because when we bring it into our communities, we're not just bringing it to the kids. We're also positively impacting the, the lives, especially the financial lives of the adults who are assisting. Because um, a lot of times this is probably their first time um, with this information as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Daryl? Sure, I had a couple of uh, thoughts about this. I honestly was impressed with the, um, the students who just knocked it out of the park. I mean, they looked extremely comfortable. Um, their advisors looked like they had gone along with this journey and had picked up some information that was going to be very valuable. And my expectation is that some of those advisors, if we're working with the same organizations, they are gonna be very enthusiastic about being involved again now that they have some experience. I also think that what made things run very smoothly was the facilitators and the structure of how the capstone was done. And I, I do believe that many of the elements we absolutely need to, um, we need to repeat. Um, I didn't think, it, I thought it was about the right, the right length of time. I mean, maybe we should just go with the expectation that this event would be about an hour and a half. I mean, it's, it seemed like that would be worthwhile. I also believe that um, what each group did was they learned from each other. It almost from the, this is like the first time they really learned from one another as competing teams for lack of a better word, way of saying it. And so I thought that setting, setting up the capstone like that was very valuable so that they could hear, um, no matter what particular ranking they had, there was something to learn from everybody. So I thought that those were positives. Okay. Um, T'Angelo, Cargill Jr. I feel like you're gonna say that forever now, Bob, and that's hilarious. <laughs> Well, I'm just a slow learner, so I, I, you know, that's how I used to do in school to learn, man. And, you no, know, I, I do the same thing to try to remember someone's name. I say it at least three times. Yeah, uh, to stick to me. And I do, I do uh, like being corrected too. That's I appreciate why I like that, you, Angelo. <laughs> yeah, because I correct you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no fear. <laughs> right. And if it makes you feel uh, better, Bob, I do that to everybody. Anybody okay. can get the smoke for me. <laughs> okay. We need somebody. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, outside of that, uh, I, I think it went really well. I don't think we had any technical difficulties, um, which I think I know was a big worry in the beginning. I think it went extremely smooth. 
I think everyone's internet seemed to say strong as well. We got lucky. <laughs> I don't think there were, I don't think, like I said, I don't think there were any glitches in that capacity. I think we only had like one person I had to mute the whole time, hmm. uh, which is again, huge. Cause we had young people, we had people who, this might've been their first time using Zoom. Um, so it, I, I was definitely very pleased in that capacity. Uh, everybody, I just echo with every, what everyone says. Um, Hion, Ioni was talking about how the young people were really just ready to speak. They had great energy, um, which speaks well to the content, the curriculum. They really felt like they learned. Um, and that's the most valuable piece. Um, and I'm sure there were parents on the line who learned just from their young people. Um, and was like, man, maybe I do need to put a little effort into this, try to learn a little more and see if I can get started in this in my own life. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I was very pleased, very happy how it turned out. Okay, um, as far as I know, um, no one else is on, uh, but I just would echo everything that people have said. Uh, the only one thing that, you know, that we, I guess, need to close a gap on is two teams were not represented at the capstone. And so far, I have not heard what happened there. Has anyone heard any feedback as far as why, I think it was Journey House and neighborhood house we're not right on. journey house neighborhood house you know i could ask because um i mean i work with neighborhood house on more than one project and journey house also and i'm not i'm not even sure that was a surprise for me that they both weren't there especially because i had a an email communication with both journey house and neighborhood house that week hmm. before we did the capstone hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you find out any feedback, uh, you can let me know. I will say that Quentin Prince from Journey House, um, I've heard from him since then, and uh, I didn't even, he was responding to something I did on Sunday. This past Sunday, we did another little workshop, and he chimed in on that. So, you know, he still seems to be engaged, and he always sends an email saying he appreciates what we're doing, but I have not asked him why he was not on the call yet. Uh, the only other thing I want to point out is uh, I think what really contributed a lot to our efficiency was the PowerPoint that uh, Bob and Julie put together in advance. So I really want to thank them for, for doing that. And I think that's a real strong element of um, how we can run this in the future and guide our efficiency by having something like that. Uh, so that worked out really well. Uh, there's, you know, we still haven't gotten as much press or whatever, and I don't, I don't even like the hound for press, but that does help your program to grow and get acknowledged. So it's only from that standpoint that I would like to see us be a little more efficient in getting info out because that's the kind of thing that if you can announce it that day and it be in the paper the next day, it's newsworthy. But if you just say last week, you know, some teams played the stock market game and, you know, so-and-so came in first or whatever, it's not as newsworthy and may not be picked up. But we still have a chance to do a little bit of, of press on that, but we haven't so far. Yeah, I think, I think about too, I mean, with the Kenosha thing and everything else, I, you know, I, this was not a time for you. Could, it was hard to get stories, I'm sure, and hard to get on, on the news. Uh, and when it comes to Quentin, I do, I finally got in touch with him today to set up a meeting on Tuesday to go through his interview questions with Journey House. So I'll ask how we missed him or how they were not able to make uh, the capstone and if there's anything we need to know, but I'll, I'll connect with him on Tuesday. Okay. And maybe we'll go in reverse order for this um, stock market game summer pilot. Just again, the overall pilot, what was good, uh, what could be improved unexpected positives and negatives. Uh, Daryl? Actually, it would be Tiangelo. Let me go with Tiangelo. What could be improved? Mm-hmm. Ah, making sure all the teams are there. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the biggest one, honestly. Uh, figuring out what that, what we missed. Um, I like to think it's something on our end um because everyone else was there um so my biggest worry is that maybe they didn't they didn't get the information um maybe they got the dates wrong and just making sure that we're more clear about that next time mm -hmm. uh, 
Mm, I don't know. I think we did a pretty good job for the first go, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, Daryl? I mean, I, I agree with Angelo. One thing to add here, maybe this is an opportunity to think about how we do our scheduling and then promote that capstone date early, early on because we actually did this capstone for some people when they're going back to school. So that may have had something to do with it. I honestly don't know, but I know in my household, you know, I have someone who went back to school and was literally, we had teachers meetings and mm -hmm. other things at the same time, you know, six o'clock and we're meeting, we're doing orientations and everything during that period. So considering the ages, you're talking about people who are over 14 years old, that's high school. And this is the period when they'd be going back. So maybe, I mean, maybe they wouldn't have known at the beginning that that was, there was a, a near date conflict or an, an, a real, uh, real date conflict. But I could, I could see how that being a problem. Um, the second part is I absolutely would want to push the notion to the advisors early on how important the capstone event is and no matter how they did with the rankings, this is the time to get the youth to shine. And that's what this was all about anyway. So mm -hmm. it's not about who placed where. I know we had you know, money attached to it, but it's really about the fun and the knowledge that they gained from the experience. And everybody, I think, benefits from hearing not just who did well and this is what went right for us, but you know, this is what went wrong for us too. So we would have, we would have encouraged, we should have encouraged that at the beginning. And then I think next year, that's something that we can focus on too. Okay. Um, Mark? Are, are we just talking about the capstone part of it? No, just the whole overall stock market game summer pilot. Okay. Um, I don't think the advisor's orientation went as well as I hoped. Um, I think that we went too quickly. Um, it, I, th I think when Julie commented that the, they didn't get the mechanicals down uh, quite right, I think maybe we need to slow down at that point, maybe really show that opening video that walks you around the website and, you know, just do it a little more deliberately than we did. I We said, oh, just go watch it. And maybe some of them didn't right away. Um, I, I think one of the really smartest ideas of the whole thing was the office hours. And Bob, I, I, somebody should say, you, you know, you really led us with the capstone and you were really planning ahead on that. Uh, and then Bob Lewaki came in and said, hey, but the kids are going to be the stars. And that really, I think the combination of uh, your planning ahead and, a, you know, it became kind of a group effort there, I think, to kind of uh, uh, make it a very successful outcome. But that wouldn't have happened, Bob, if you hadn't been pushing on that uh, agenda for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, so I tightened up the advisor's orientation, uh, familiarize them more with the mechanicals, maybe show the actual video. I think I'd like to do, a, if we could in the second round, expand the number of nonprofits and just generally tighten up our communications with them. And I, I, I think we were fairly tight on our end, but you know, just find the learn from what we did there uh, and and uh, Bob, I think you did a really good job on the office hours. I don't know if we can promote that more or not, uh, but it, it, uh, I thought that went well. And, and if we just keep that going, think about the topics that uh, need to be included. I, I don't really have any issue with anything you did there. I'm just saying, you know, let's kind of look at that and maybe massage it a little bit. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, Julie? Um, yeah, um, I think the only thing that I, I, I thought that maybe we kind of did it um, not wrong, but maybe out of order was, I know like the first two speakers that we kind of had where they were really kind of getting into the nitty gritty of um, like how to search for a company and um, the value of the company and the stock and all that. I think at the time that we did it, it was way over our head, um, over the mentor's head. It was almost over my head. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I think that we may have been better off maybe kind of switching that more towards um, 
um, later on during um, the office hours and brought more of, you know, like, um, you know, when Ioni spoke about, you know, investing early and um, uh, the different jobs that could be had with, um, let's see, financial um, almost background and stuff like that. But yeah, I thought some of the speakers that we had at the very beginning were very advanced level. And I think that um, I almost feel like we might have kind of overwhelmed our mentors or um, scared them. I mean, because I even had a hard time kind of keeping them. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, gosh, like I know the ins and outs of the game, but this is kind of a little bit confusing for me. So, um, you know, but that's just my perspective. I don't know. Maybe the mentors didn't feel that way, but I did just because, and I thought, well, if I feel that way and, and I actually know how to play the game, um, I was trying to imagine how they were kind of feeling. So that would be my really only thing is, is that we kind of keep more of that, um, that real advance um, um, getting into the market and, you know, how to really get into the understanding of how market prices are um, uh, developed and stuff like that a little bit later on. Um, I do think that we need to talk more about, you know, kind of the very mechanical of the game, you know, how do you check what you have in your account? How do you check, you know, how do the advisors check other people, you know, all of their kids' accounts and where they're standing? Um, so it's just kind of the very basic things. I think that for me, I took it for granted that, you know, normally our educators don't have these questions. And so I kind of went with that guideline, and that was probably a mistake kind of on our part that we needed to probably kind of guide them a little bit more than we traditionally do with a regular group of people that play our game. So I think other than that, um, I, don't, I don't see, um, I don't have any other thing to add. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay, Bob? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll echo, and again, I think I'll echo what Julie said, uh, but I think, you know, part of it was we were kind of fig figuring out office hours as we were going along. So I mm -hmm. probably would next year, uh, you know, um, synchronize it, let's say, with the curriculum a bit in the sense that, um, you know, for example, again, as Julie mentioned, you know, working, maybe even doing two, two parts to orientation, like here's the broad overview of what we're trying to accomplish, yada, 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 and then do like the week we're wanting to make their first trade to go in depth on, on the office hours, this is the week you're gonna make your first trade or how you're gonna do research um, on a company. So I, 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 and then, you know, move into the more um, deep approaches like looking at finance, Yahoo Finance and things of that sort once they've made their first trade and they got that out of the way. And then towards the end, I love what we did with Constance and, and careers. Now we're talking action. So it's like orientation, uh, get in line with the game, get him going with the game, deeper understanding, and then at the end, action. What, what We want them to do something. At the, I mean, like I said, all these kids open up checking accounts or savings accounts at the very least, we, we've had an impact. So, but again, we wouldn't know that since we didn't know we were doing office hours, just like we didn't know we were doing a capstone event when we started this. So now that we have a thing, I think we can follow it. Yeah. The other thing I thought, uh, and especially like maybe in office hours around doing research and looking at mm -hmm. industries. Like, I mean, I love that one of the folks said they looked at um, Moderna because of its COVID vaccine or, you know, and I know I hear that a lot in the schools that they say, let's look at current events, not just, I mean, there's the piece of what brands we know, but then let's look at current events, what's going on, because that's another aspect of the game is for kids to be more aware of what's going on in the world. Uh, you know, versus just focusing on name brands. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I thought, uh, and we talked about it, Bob, too, I guess, it, again, thinking of that first trade, is there some way we can incentivize the first trade, you know, maybe some type of uh, small gift card or something else for uh, the team that makes the first trade or the team that is positive after a week or something like that, so that they don't spend three weeks, you know, worrying about a trade. Um, and I was also wondering, uh, in the future are uh, looking at it if you know some of the advisors uh, that we had who are actually in the financial industry do we pair them with a nonprofit so that let's say on that research piece and so forth they can skype into a meeting or zoom into a meeting and be that assistance to that mentor because I keep on, I kept on feeling bad a bit for our advisors and mentors knowing that they have full-time jobs 
uh, and, and all this thing, this came in on their lap and this is not a specialty of theirs. So if they, and not to mention it would help maybe some of our mentors with some of their professional building relationships and networking uh, with some of the folks and even our um, community partners would probably love it if they knew folks from Baird or folks from uh, Dane Rauscher or something like that were engaging with their programs. That would, as a nonprofit, that'd be another plus plus for me if I might be engaging someone who might make a United Way donation to me or something like that. So yeah. that, that's an, and would take a little bit of um, the stress off the mentor in an area they might not be strong in, if, you know, obviously fan, financial advising. Yeah, I was just going to say, we did set that up and some used it and some did not. As a right. matter of fact, to a point that it was either a um, new life or peak initiative uh, where their staff um, were not able to continue. I think it might have been peak and they ended up uh, using one of the financial advisors that actually oversaw the students who were involved. And I know in Madison, a gentleman from Edward Jones was very engaged with the advisors, uh, uh, with the um, non-professional advisors for the Madison team as well. But then some just never followed right. up on who I had assigned because I did send it out, putting okay. the ball in the court of the staff advisor, not right. wanting the financial professional to feel obligated to try to go through all the links to contact that staff person. Yeah. And so, uh, but I think that's something that could be done a lot more uh, tightly next time around. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I didn't know if the advisors were there and they could call somebody versus it being signed to them, so, you know. But again, we were doing so much at the beginning. And maybe that's what I mean about breaking up orientation. So orientation is more about explaining their roles, explaining the advisors, what we're trying to accomplish, and then save some of the, and, and maybe, and obviously registration but then mm -hmm. save some of the nitty gritty for trades and all that for, for, for when they're ready to do that. Because I think the timing almost became, we orientated folks about a month before their first trade, and there's no way they remember what was said uh, mm -hmm. a month earlier about something they've never seen before. And especially some of the anomalies people had uh, that are common mistakes or concerns is I'm not seeing my trade right away, or it didn't go through, that they don't understand it takes 24 hours. So if we had a little bit more time, I think in the mm -hmm. orientation piece, uh, closer to when they actually make their first trade, they're more likely to remember those kind of little mm -hmm. tidbits of information. And I'm not sure how we did as uh, Economics Wisconsin as far as if we could also help more with being proactive with um, emails and so forth to the mm -hmm. groups on a weekly basis, whether that be reminding about the videos or some other things or other aspects that we could provide them to make sure they're using all the tools that are available to them. But uh, those were all, those were just, to me, I see those as uh, add-ons and improvements, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, as having more time to prepare, thinking of how we can pull this together where, you know, I'm, I'm just amazed everything that was pulled off for, uh, for such a short period of time of planning. Okay, uh, Ioni. Yes. Um, Who I've been holding my, <laughs> my three <laughs> responses, just the bottom of the list. Um, what was good? I think just having the experience overall, uh, the amount of uh, students and adult advisors that were able to participate this time around mm -hmm. um, was good. And as we saw in the capstone, the, um, the sharing of the lessons learned and the, the recap that the students did, I think that that was really, really good because um, I have uh, this new philosophy because of the game and what, what has been um, transpiring this summer is that uh, these were really seeds that were planted um, mm -hmm. amongst about 80 um, uh, students of, of African descent. And we may not see the real fruits of what we did until about 20 more years. Um, but just hearing some of the students say, hmm, I think I may want to go into finance or I think I may want to do this or that or I understand this and that more. Um, that was the part that was good. I would say what could be improved. Um, honestly, I was from from my side. I was very busy this summer. So once I created the teams, I did not check on the teams. 
unless an advisor reached out to me, um, mm. that was that was really the only the only thing I did was I just made sure that each of the groups that I set up had two advisors, and I figured that you know between two adults they would be able to cover it. Um, so what I w- want to do next time is to at least v- uh, visit one of the meetings of each of the teams Mm, just sit in listen you know try to see what happened Um, because of course when you don't check on anything and 10 weeks go by um, there was one group we signed up eight teams one group disbanded um, by like the third week Um, and then in another group there were uh, two substitutes that I wasn't aware of until I got the email back to say, hey, this is the list of my, this is the contact information of my final group of kids. And I'm like, wait, that's not what I had on my roster. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one, um, I checked in with another advisor at the end where um, because of basketball, two brothers were really not a part. And then one kind of college age student didn't really participate. So out of a group of five, he actually only had about two students that um, really were committed throughout the summer. So uh, that's what I think could be improved, just actually sitting in on at least one of the meetings um, for each of the teams. Um, That's something that I I would like to do um, come next summer. And okay, where Ioni, where did I recruit my teams from? So that's a good question. So we in South Florida, Miami, West Palm Beach area, um, a few of the teams that I had already signed up or that were the first to respond were um, youth groups that we already work with. So there's one youth group that we work with that's co-ed and they collectively are reading the book, Think and Grow Rich. And they meet every Sunday at about 3 p.m. and they do like you know, recap of what they learned about the book and the goals they're setting and all of that stuff. So that was initially who we had intended um, to, you know, use those group of kids and use the advisors that are already over that group. But of course, my mom being who she is, she started telling a lot of other people. And um, what I shared with Bob yesterday is that when I started to get calls, hey, I want my child in, I want my child in, one of the requirements was I was not taking your child unless you were also going to serve as an adult. So um, outside of that first group, the first youth group, we down here, um, the, our Better Investing community, there are a lot of adu- uh, Black adults who are just starting their investment education. And so I reached out to them and said, hey, we have this thing going on with the kids. You may want to participate and be an advisor. You don't have to know anything in advance, but the curriculum is already set. And so that's how I got a lot of the advisors. Um, And then the third wave was a friend, um, one of the advisors start telling their friends. And those friends said, would call me and say, hey, I want my child in it. And then to them, because I did not know them, I would say, you know, in order for me to take your child, you will have to sign up to be an advisor because that was the only way that um, I could ensure that um, we could retain the kids and there was going to be buy-in from the parents. Um, And so once I got that list solidified, what I did was uh, some groups that I knew needed extra uh, care I would put them with advisors they knew, but some that did not, I would um, just kind of pair them. And I, so I made a few all, all boys group, a few all girls group. I kept all young kids together with their parents. Um, and so that's, that's basically how I end up creating the teams. Um, and with unexpected positive and or negatives, I would say that um, I guess I, I, <laughs> I think I naively thought that all the teams would stay together, but I think the unexpected positive was that so many of the teams did stay together um, and they finished. Um, the unexpected negatives were 
uh, which Julie, of course, pointed out. And I think this, if, if I would have sat in on some of the team meetings, um, this could have been an improvement. But some of, the, some of the teams just did not make the mark, uh, whether it be the number of trades or really, I think it came down to not having invested over $70,000. And so what I think was an unexpected negative that I did not, yeah, I just did not expect this was, and I haven't talked to any, any adults specifically about this. This is just my assumption, but there were, there had to me, there had to have been some uh, fears that came up around money to prohibit anybody, adult or child, um, to not invest, play money. I, I, I think I, I'm, uh, I or we may have underestimated what $100,000 looks like and the fear that comes from, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to lose the money. I don't know what to do with this. Let me, let me buy $2,000 worth. $2,000 of $100,000 is not, is not going to cut it. Um, and so I think it, there, ha there probably is an underlining issue of why certain teams did not invest at least $70,000. And I think it probably deals with the uncomfortability around money for both the adults that were advising them and the children that were, um, you know, in a sense, responsible for, for making the trade. Um, yeah. So, yeah, even even though it was fake money, um, yeah. but I, I don't understand why why you wouldn't, it, unless for some other reason. And so I think I am going to uh, follow back with I think I had about three teams, two to three teams that did not invest the majority of those that money. Um, and I'm actually kind of surprised because the adults from those teams are in my now new investment club. So, you know, I, I was a little shocked, but I think kind of looking deeper, it was like, you know, there probably is something else there that, that I didn't, uh, I didn't expect. And so that was, to me, was my unexpected negative. I think part of, to your point, Ione, is just shows how <laughs> foreign the whole investment experience is for a large part of the population that we were able to target through this game. Uh, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'll just run through some bullet points uh, that I had as feedback. Can, We've I, all say Can I say something about also? Yeah, yeah it's because I, when I did mine, I didn't realize I had another section I could do. But mm -hmm. to that point, I believe what would be helpful is education around custodial accounts. Like they did have that information, which is extremely important. And what I know from my own personal experience was when I was coming up as a minor, I actually did have custodial stock investments. It was when I made the transition to an adult, nobody talked to me about, well, you know what, you're responsible for this. You're, you know, you have to put in a certain amount of money and things like that there's a conversation about you being the leader that I think we absolutely have to have with this topic. I don't believe everybody is afraid of money per se, because if you gave a person, you know, $10,000, they know what to do with it, <laughs> you know? So it's not the concept of money all the time. It's the concept of the planning around the responsibility with it that a lot of people fall short. They don't have that conversation around the dinner table. They, don't, they aren't sitting down doing a budget a lot of times. You know, they're ready to spend it. But if you're saying make money with this money, that's a different type of thinking that you have to have. So I, I, I wanna put that in there. I, I did, hadn't really thought it out too much, but I, I, like I said, I know from personal experience, the difference between me and people who were my age, who were in that same situation, I saw what happened. You know, they kept their custodial accounts until they were like 30 years old. And meanwhile, when it was my turn, I started looking up things because I'm, I was essentially the master of my destiny at that point. 
So um, I think that's a part of the conversation. But the other thing that I absolutely wanted to bring up, and unexpected this time was the business with the computers. And I know there were, there were glitches in the, the way that the donated computers were, um, that they arrived. And so my guess, and this is just based on some conversations with the group that eventually got them. My guess was they took the position, well, if we don't have the computers, we won't do much of anything. We're just going to wait. And so even without the equipment, I think that the conversation should still be around. There is always something you can do. So you just don't have to wait and sit and we'll catch up. I think fundamentally, we still have to be engaged from the beginning. And, you know, the attitude has to be, no matter what we're studying or no matter what we're planning or no matter what we are having a conversation, we're organizing toward this goal, which is the final thing I wanted, I wanted to mention because this game simulation was also about goals. And I do a lot of trainings related to goals. So example would be smoking cessation. And when you're setting your goals, you have a system of, I know how far I've gotten because I've done this step. And so within the, the stock market game and within our curriculum, I know we can do that type of thing also, you know, because it's, it's actually there. It's just the manner in which we communicate it in a virtual environment. Because if I were, if I were an advisor with them, I, I believe what Bob Wilacki said, certain steps should be incentivized just to make sure that people know that they're moving forward. Pat them on the back because they took a step forward is, is where I would go as far as, you know, recognize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just to mention some things that I haven't heard so far, uh, and I can send out my raw notes that I've taken. Um, for the pre and post test, we want to work on the uh, identifiers and Mark knows what I'm talking about there, just to be sure we can compare notes between an individual's pre test and post test. And we're going to talk about that next. Um, also, uh, we'll talk about what format you want the pre and post test in, because there was a little bit of miscommunication on that as well. One of uh, the people I interviewed from New Life said that uh, once in a while they couldn't get access through the Dropbox. So we maybe want to talk a little bit more about um, how people can access the information. And we want to talk about how to archive what we have as well, because we've got some great, um, some great documents. Um, just a couple of the positives that people have already mentioned. The Florida involvement was a very good positive. The uh, office hours, which I really enjoyed. And just to point out one other aspect, I agree with the order and content of what the office hours can be going forward. But part of what I was also doing was massaging some relationships of folks that we may want to go after for some funding in the future. So I appreciate everybody's patience because once in a while, uh, you're going to be in front of somebody and you may not know why, but sometimes it's because in two years from now, they might provide us some money. <laughs> And uh, relationships for big money takes uh, more than a year. Um, the other is uh, we did have one so-called VIP appearance, and that was with Niall Diggs. Uh, we could have had more. So one thing I'd like to know is, you know, whether that's something that might spice things up positively in the future. Um, I noticed on the capstone, if you guys have a chance to look at it again, especially the latter part, I thought the latter part was all very, very interesting. Um, where uh, Emmanuel Scarborough jumped in and everybody started uh, teasing me for uh, losing to Ioni. Uh, and then uh, Rodney Link jumped in. Um, there's, there's more of a competition atmosphere that I think we could have created and going forward somehow we want to try to create that fun uh, competition. And then speaking of that and everybody knowing that these uh, staff people and probably teachers too, but certainly the staff people we worked with need much more orientation and getting used to the platform. So one question I have is to Bob and Julie, maybe I heard you guys say there's a free year long opportunity for people to just hop on the site and 
use it. And I'm wondering if we might want to be a little more um, planful about that and see if we can set up a mutual start and finish time during the school year just for our advisors and others that maybe want to participate in the summer to uh, get on that platform and play play with it during the school year. Yeah, the well, there's the well, we we have our you know competition games, but the in um, a year long game, but SIFMA does offer free promo sessions for three or four weeks where people can play with it at different times. So um, again, maybe that's just something about we need to think about what a mailing list might look like, where we could send some things out without annoying people that if they want to play along, they, they could try. I mean, because uh, SIFMA probably would have had one, um, you know, just, uh, you know, in the second semester, if somebody wants to try it again, it, it's whether, you know, they're going to stay invested um, in the, in that next, uh, next opportunity. Okay, good. We can work on that. And, uh, in the interest of time, um, I think people know who has consulted with their staff and who has not. And Bob G just mentioned that he's got a follow-up. The only other one is going to be journey house. And I know Ioni is going to be following up with uh, journey house, the rest of uh, reports I have gotten in. And by the way, Shannon just sent me a text, just apologizing that he had a conflict today and couldn't be, be with us. But I think it's important that we at least find out where we're at with the uh, pre and post test, if any further progress. And Mark, you're just getting back to town. So I don't even know if you've had a chance to touch base with Donald. No, I haven't tried. Um, mm -hmm. You've been kind of leading the communications on that. So uh, if you want to see where Donald is on that, that'd be great. And uh, if he can just give me the uh, analysis that he's got, then we could start, I could be helping you with that part of the report. Okay. Um, and, or, and or let's, you know, feel free to involve Donald in it too. Uh, uh, it may be a case of the more the merrier. And if he, uh, this helps, uh, melt him, uh, uh, weld him into this uh, process, that would be just great. So, um, but anyway, once, once I just need to see the pre-post uh, test uh, results and uh, they look to me to be very promising on the adult, on the, I, I read through the attitude ones too, that I suspect that that's going to look very positive. And I mm -hmm. think there's going to be some good, good feedback there. Okay. Uh, no, that's great. Um, Anybody else has anything to say regarding the pre and post tests? Uh, I think that's another thing we need to put into our feedback that in, in addition to the identifiers, we want, maybe there's another step of um, follow up and planning that we can do because I think we got about 70% 70, um, 70 of the people who did the post test did the pre, -te uh, did the pre test. So, if I said it right, in other words, I think about 30% did not do the post test. So, um, you know, we'd like to get more follow up if we can on that, but we got an appreciable number. So Mark, Mark will be able to make some uh, aggregate data and assessments. Yeah, and you were trying, you were thinking that you guys might want to have an article of better investing or something like that. That's right. Uh, I only, isn't that something that you had talked about? I don't think I came up with that idea, but I don't mind doing it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a good I idea. mean, I may have, but I don't remember. Well, I, I think Bob, I think, well, I'm not sure who the idea was, but I think that Bob, you said you had the caution that not everybody at Better Investing lo loves the stock market game. On the oh, other hand, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, but on the other hand, if we actually have some pre and post test results that are sort of impressive and we can reference the big study that's done, and I know you'll never, persuade some folks. Uh, but if, if you were worried about the short term impact and say that, oh, it's just rewarding gambling, uh, then I would just show them that capstone <laughs> recording because it was very clear that they were saying, no, no I got to learn how to save. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to learn how to invest. It, it, it was, I was surprised at the long term comments people made uh, and they didn't get fooled. And I don't think they usually get fooled. It's yeah. a 10 week game. It's a game, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And um, you, to your point, I think we can even glean some quotes out of that capstone that might be good for the article. 
as there. well. And then I think there's a little piece that Ioni and I can talk about as far as uh, she's leading an, a model club and I'm leading a model club. We're gonna invite some of the advisors and even students who participated in the game to now uh, graduate over to the actual investment club itself. So I think better investing is too myopic if they don't see the potential synergy between the stock market game and them growing their better investing membership base. You know, the no. other part, some people oh. talked about things being, you know, people being slow to invest or wanting to save. And I think that's the important part of the stock market game, at least for now, for the next few years, to really to recognize if you're parking your money in a savings account, you're actually losing money. And, okay. and, you know, again, if generationally, when I was brought up, it was put it in the savings account, at least as you're, I mean, obviously you have to have an emergency fund. But, you know, the, this thought about putting in your savings account, that, that is probably everything a grandma tells her grandson or granddaughter. But right now, you, you might as well put it in, in you know, in, in, your, in a drawer. Uh, and in I know, a yeah, and I know I only wants to say a word, but I just got to interject that today, as we speak, Zoom, the stock, is up 127 points today. So a person who owned 100 shares of Zoom would have made $10,000 today. My now, mama. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just. She I had only your mama did that for real? My mama been on Zoom for years. And back and before COVID hit, she was like, I need you to log on Vanguard right now. I want to buy Zoom. I was like, okay, I don't think so, but it's your money, so I'll get it for you. So, yeah, she got Zoom. Oh, how, much, how many yeah. stocks did you buy in Zoom? What's that? At least 10. It may yeah. have been more than that, but at least 10. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, my family club had Apple, and it split four for one, so we went from 50 shares to 200 shares. And I only bought Apple because, uh, what's his name, dared me on the capstone. So oh. <laughs> I bought 10 shares last week. There you go. Okay. Iona, you got money for real. Uh oh. A stock in oh. Apple is $125 right now. You just said that so <laughs> slight. Oh, I bought 10 stock. What? <laughs> I'm not living like I'm you. not living. I'm not I'm living home like for you. nothing, T'Angelo. <laughs> I'm yeah. not living home for nothing, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they don't, call the you the, they don't call you the baby billionaire for nothing either. So with that being said, I wanted to uh, just jump in, going back to what, uh, well, based on what Mark was saying, to add to the BI uh, mm -hmm. bent, the what better. I and I have reached reached out to Julie um, and and after talking with her was able to reach out to the advisor. I still have a few more teams I need to, to reach out to. But what I've decided to do is to basically capture the portfolios of each of the teams, especially within the Florida um, contingent and put them into um, my be better investing portfolio tools. So basically I would create a, I would create a portfolio, I would put their name on it and I would put, you know, whatever stock and number of shares that they have within each holding so that by this time next year, they could see what their, their actual value, the, the actual value of their portfolio is based on decisions they had made last year. And I think just by over time watching that kind of like a pro portfolio frozen in time, which encourages um, long-term investing and, and then waiting around to see the results, I think it would then add um, an, an even a higher value and more of a benefit for them to start to gain a long-term perspective. That's a great idea, yeah. Ioni. That's really smart. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Be something to perhaps um, be more planful for, for the future, for everybody, uh, for all the teams, and just archive those somewhere. That'd be a very interesting thing just to do. Yeah. So let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, the last things won't take too much longer. Um, we do, I think, we're certainly going to do a report of some sort. Um, and then we talked about a better investing article and Bob, I don't know if you think we should do a newsletter or just maybe a press release, an indie ending press release. And you know, maybe this press release should come from Economics Wisconsin. Um, United Way dragged it out a little bit and they had their shot, which was a good shot. So maybe, um, Bob, what do you think? 
I, well, I guess I'll be looking for, I think the most powerful thing is whatever Mark can pull together from the post test that we actually have some, uh, some numbers behind it. Cause I, I think that's what people will be looking for not just how people finished or teams finished, but I think they'll be looking for some factoids. And so if we can pull some stuff out, I think that's important. Let's then let's say that um, when we do have that uh, data, we'll just resume uh, by Zoom and just have Mark sort of walk us through it. It doesn't have to be a long meeting, but it would be nice just to uh, get that feedback. So whenever that's ready, Mark will coordinate inviting this planning group to hear what you find. How's that? That's fine. Okay. And um, the event is, the pilot is over, but what about just holding those materials? Um, Bob, I guess the YouTube stuff can stay where it's at, right? Yep, the YouTube, if, if anybody goes to our YouTube page, I, I edited the capstone, so it's just when we started, so that's there, as well as uh, most of the um, office hours, not all of them, but most of them. Okay. Oh, they're on your YouTube page, Bob G? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Julie, well, can we, you put that in the chat, please? I want to go to that. Yeah, so you can, so that's there. Um, Thank you. So, I also, you know, before uh, too, at, at least from what I could see, because I had more time to look at stuff, just so people knew, like the head of SIFMA Foundation was on the call. Uh, mm -hmm. The president and CEO of United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha was on on the uh, with the I capstone. I did not know project. that, Bob. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So, I, uh, and actually, one of the funders that I had hopes of getting more out of, they didn't say yes this time, but they asked me for the capstone video so they could learn more about it. Uh, and I promised also to, once we have numbers, to share it with them as to how it went. So, uh, and I think especially if we can also nail down from zip codes what it looked like. I mean, I've been saying it's, it's some of the highest uh, rates of zip codes with the highest levels of poverty, because I think that's right. But it'd be nice to nail some of that down um, in, in looking for money or in reporting out. Fantastic. Okay. Um, let's see, fall coming up. Oh. Um, give me that those dates again. I think I have them in my notes already. It starts in October. Uh, October twelfth is the first day of trading. Uh, registrations already open. Oh, okay. Yeah, my and my guess if you know people go there because like they did with this game, if you go where people are and, and go back in and register, there's probably something that says promo game and you can play along on the promo game for free. There's some features that aren't the same as the regular game, but it's it's really built for people to try it out and see if they like the game before, you know, if these are teachers committing your kids to 10 weeks to do something is a little bit of a commitment. So yeah. it gives them a chance to play with it and so forth. So uh, the registration is currently open and I'm sure the promo game is, is going to. If they actually want to formally register, uh, how do they pay the $25? Uh, it'll, yeah, it'll go right through. It'll show them what to do. Right, Julie? Okay. And um, yeah, actually what happens is that um, if you actually want to play one of the games that you actually have to pay for, you will actually get billed by Economics Wisconsin oh. at a later time. Okay. So we do that because um, sometimes people sign up and they don't play the game. So we wait until they kind of play the game and we wait until a little bit closer, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a month or so into the game and then we build them and then we give them about a month to pay it. Okay. Now, the way you register, if the, a community-based organization wanted to play the game, let's say Journey House, uh, where it asks for a school, what will they put there? They can do just like what they did for the pilot game. They're just going to put in their organization. Um, I mean, what? I mean, the pilot game is legitimately what the real game is. We just held our hands a lot more through it, as in having office hours and all that, but the registration process, how the game works is exactly as any other game that we have. Fabulous. That's great. Because that really add, uh, offers a whole nother avenue that we can promote uh, the game because the $25 is uh, accessible. It's not an onerous amount for anybody that wants to play. I'm sure we can raise that. Um, by the way, thank you, Mark Shug, who's donating for some of the incentive money for uh, Florida, as well as Niall Diggs and myself. So, uh, and then of course the McNeils. So uh, their funding is coming in a little bit after the fact, but 
uh, thanks to generosity. Uh, Where am I supposed that. to send the check, Bob? I did send you a oh, you did. text on that, but I'll okay. follow up and send it again. I think okay. it was- No, 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 that's okay. I, I, uh, I may have just missed it. Bob, okay. when you mentioned Niall Diggs, that made me think of something where you're talking, let's say, you know, we weren't able to work in uh, celebrities, let's say, you know, there's a thought of something that could be an incentive. Okay. If your team's leading, uh, within the first four weeks of the game, Niall Diggs will come zoom into your meeting or whoever you have. That way, it's in a sense, we don't have to come up with more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a sense, we come up with an experience that, mm -hmm. or whatever, it'll zoom into you know, the top two teams or something like that. But like as that. you said, yeah, start to incentivize the competition uh, mm -hmm. in a different way. And it's, it's another way, again, go back to economics. It's another way to say you get, there's incentives that we pay for like money and there's things that we desire that can be an incentive that is a service, not necessarily something that's just something we, uh, that's physical. That's but, yeah. Yeah. And, and as and we were on this uh, phone, I'm doing some volunteer um, ec um, economic education or really saving and budget type presentations for another NFL athlete that has his own little camp. And I'm doing it virtually, and he just texts me, so we might be able to get him to help us with some additional uh, folks. And that goes to the whole point of what we're envisioning next year is uh, seeing if we can tie the game to a few more celebrities. And I'm thinking the Milwaukee Bucks. I hope we have an opportunity to connect next summer's program to the Bucks and maybe find someone in Florida uh, as well and the other states that we want to go to. So that really uh, almost concludes where we're at. There is a private Facebook page. Some people do Facebook, some do not. But the McNeils and I set up um, stock, I think it's called the Stock Market Game Summer Pilot. And you can go there and ask to join. If you're already friends with someone who is an administrator, which would be the McNeils or myself, we can join you in as well. Um, we haven't used it too much yet, but it is another way just to stay in, uh, in contact on a regular basis. We also um, want to think about ways to stay connected to students and advisors. I'm just going to have a very open informal session with the Wisconsin uh, advisors and even a few staff people from nonprofits that did not participate at 3.30 today. That's what this sort of open office hour is all about. And um, I have no idea how many will show up or whatever, but it's just an uh, opportunity to be more ears than t mouth and just want to kind of listen, see what people think they want coming up next. Um, I am uh, planning to follow up to meet with the Finance Career Presenters, uh, Paige and Angela, who did a really, really great PowerPoint that we want to keep and tweak and uh, really begin to orient people toward thinking about careers in high finance. So that's gonna be at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And I wanted to know if anybody else wants to be on that call, I can send you the Zoom invite. Otherwise, what I'll do is just this is a small planning group. So I'll just send you the Zoom invite. And if you want to be there at nine and click in, you're welcome to do so. I just wanna talk a little bit about how to utilize that presentation uh, a number of times over the next uh, two semesters because we really want to plant the seed of understanding what these careers are all about. Um, and we have other collective impact strategies that we are going to be brainstorming about. And one of them is an essay contest that John Daniels uh, talked to me, well, emailed me about, and it's regarding the book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? And um, and then Mark is working with me on the youth council. Right now it was five, now we're down to four students who mostly are at King and one is at School of Languages. And uh, Mark got uh, suggested a book, uh, Common Sense Economics, and hopefully they'll start reading that and we'll sort of walk them through uh, page by page, I don't know, page by page, but chapter by chapter. And uh, we're hoping that they'll be ready to, um, sort of showcase what they're learning maybe in another month or so. Uh, just taking it very, very slow uh, to see if they're truly going to be um, you know, youth leaders or if they're just sort of excited for a week or two. 
Uh, right now, um, several of us have had offline discussions about summer 2021. We haven't seen Mark's official data yet, but just based on the capstone feedback and uh, everything we've seen so far, we think it's clear that we ought to follow up and do something a little bigger and uh, certainly a little better in 2021. And Ioni and I are thinking that, um, you know, to the extent it's a virtual platform, that we should be able to engage several states beyond just Wisconsin and Florida next year. And then I've talked to Bob Glowacki, you know, about some of my aspirations along that, those lines to, you know, sort of really um, build it under the uh, collective impact banner, because uh, we think that uh, it's pretty long way this project can go. So that's pretty much the um, wrap up of where we're at right now. I would say we wouldn't set another meeting until Mark, D Donald and I can confer and see when the next, uh, when the data is ready for some sort of summarization and then, you know, we'll come back together and, and do a little summary of that. And then probably each of us will be collaborating, talking offline as we develop a concept for a report and then put that report together. By report, I'm thinking, I think no more than about five pages at the most. I mean, and probably some of that is graphics or, or pictures. <laughs> so it's not anything super uh, complicated. Any reaction thoughts uh, before we close out? Well, I just, I think we're, we're looking really two re reports. We're looking at the main report that'll be with us and we can share with the people from uh, the collaborative or the collective, uh, but then I think that we should talk about it if we want to take something and maybe bring it over to uh, Better Investing uh, mm. and get some publicity there. And uh, we'll just see. We'll just see. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else from uh, anybody else? If not, then we are concluding. And just to give you the option, I'll send you the invite for tomorrow at 9 a.m but definitely no, no pressure. The 3.30, you already have an invite. Again, no pressure. I'm trying to clarify to people, the, the pilot is really over and now it's just, you know, Bob that doesn't know how to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank all of you very, very much and, um, and see some of you, see all of you later eventually. Thanks so much. Peace everybody. All right, take care. <laughs>